If you recoil at the prospect of yet another state management library for React, don't worry, recoil is a fairly straightforward to use in your React application. It provides an API which is very similar to the use state hook that we are already used to in a React application. At this stage, recoil is in its early development, so some of the APIs may change in the future, but let's get a head start to get ourselves acquainted with this state management library. To get you started to understand Recoil, let's go ahead and clone a Git repository. So add the prompt uh, in a convenient location on your uh, computer. Type git clone minus b recoil. The minus b recoil says that check out the recoil branch after cloning it. HTTPS github.com jmupala slash confusion hyphen react hyphen 16.13.1 git. And let's go ahead and clone this git repository. And once it is cloned, we will move into the confusion react 16.13.1 folder and then do a git branch to understand that we have now uh, checked out the recoil branch of this um, git repository. Now we can also check out all the other branches by saying git branch minus all and you see that there is an origin master that is mapped to the remote origin master and then there is the recoil. So if you want to switch to the master branch, all that you need to do is say git checkout master and then you'll be able to switch to the master branch. But right now let's stay with the recoil branch. The master branch of course contains the confusion react application re-implemented using hooks, which I have illustrated to you in an earlier video. So the recoil branch will use the uh, recoil state management library in place of the use reducer hook that we used in the earlier implementation. Let's go ahead and open this application in Visual Studio Code so that we can take a look at the code. Also, going back to the terminal, make sure that you have the JSON server up and running before you launch the React application, because this React application is going to access the JSON server in order to fetch the data. Now, we already know how to do this from our earlier experience and from the Coursera React course. So after this, let's go ahead and install all the packages. And after the yarn install completes. Let's go ahead and start the server to serve up the React application. And once the server is launched, let's go to the browser and then type uh, imac.ust.hk or whatever your um, uh, computer's uh, name colon 3000 to start the React application. And you will notice that this is the exact React um, confusion application that we have seen earlier, but now implemented using the recoil state management library. Now, the application's behavior is exactly the same as before, so you won't notice any difference in the way the application works. Except so how does recoil work? Recoil is based around a data flow graph approach for uh, managing the data. You uh, start with, so when you go to the motivation, you will see the reason for designing the recoil uh, library here and the detailed explanation here. And uh, the uh, advantage is that you get boilerplate free API for the uh, uh, global state management and also makes it a lot more convenient to, uh, to share states among different components that may be at different locations in the tree. 
And recoil is based around the core concepts called as an atom. An atom is a unit of state that defines the root of a data flow graph from where you have the data flowing through the graph to reach the endpoints and be able to uh, be accessed within your React components. Now, the atoms themselves are up updatable and subscribable. And so that is the reason why uh, Recoil makes it a lot more easier to use. Now, a selector is yet another component, which is a pure function that takes an atom as an input or could take another selector as an input and then derives a derived state from that using the function to reevaluate the state there. Now, the advantage here is that if any upstream uh, selectors or atoms change, then the, the whole data flow graph will be recomputed, uh, the parts, and then automatically result in the appropriate components that subscribe to these um, values to be re-rendered in your application. So that's the advantage of using selectors. Now, to get started, you will notice that it is fairly straightforward to uh, uh, install Recoil. We'll, we'll have to do an NPM install Recoil or yarn add Recoil in our application. And then in uh, the application, we will import the recoil root from recoil and then surround our application with recoil root. Atoms, as we will see, are described with a key and a default value. And then from these atoms, then you can uh, make use of the atoms in any of the components by simply saying use recoil state or use recoil value, as you would see, and then specify the key as the parameter to this. So notice that the way this um, interface looks is very similar to the way we use the use state hook in React. And that's the reason why Recoil is very easy to integrate into your React application. Of course, going through the documentation here with the basic tutorials, you'll be able to easily understand how to make use of Recoil. I have re-implemented the uh, as I said, the um, Confusion app using Recoil. So let's go to the code and then take a quick look at the re-implementation there. Going to the source code, you will notice that in the source code, the components are pretty much the same as what we have seen before, except that now they are using Recoil. That state management is completely implemented in this one single file called confusion.js. So when you open this confusion.js file, you will notice that here we import the atom, the selector, and then we'll import use recoil value and use recoil or reset recoil state from recoil and then use this in our application. Here I have defined one single atom uh, here called as the URL which is then used in the remaining state. So here I define a, a selector called the dishes state, which is a key, uh, which uses the key as a dishes state. And then it uses a get here, and a, which is an asynchronous implementation where we make use of the fetch uh, API to fetch data from the server. Now in the, application itself, I have implemented it gradually step by step. So if you go to the GitHub repository, in the GitHub repository, um, you will notice that we have the master branch and also we have the recoil branch. So if you switch to the recoil branch, you will notice that we have 26 different commits. So you can look at all these commits step by step. And here I introduce you to uh, how we make use of Recoil um, in our application. Uh, up to React hook form, the application is exactly the same as the uh, implementation using just hooks that we, I have uh, referred to in an earlier video. But at this point, instead of using the use reducer uh, hook to manage state, I am introducing Recoil. So in the um, in this commit, you will see how I have defined atoms. 
uh, in the application and then made use of them to support the uh, state here and then um, we have separate items we i introduce you to recoil selectors recoil setting state fetching from the server so when we fetch from the server we are uh, using selectors with an async implementation uh, that uh, uses the fetch api to get the data from the server and then all the way up to assignment four so the the commits here pretty much map into the uh, same set of uh, exercises that you see in my Coursera course or in the uh, hooks based implementation that I have ex explained in an earlier video. In the source code itself, you will notice that this is the final version of the source code that is the last commit, but you can go back and examine earlier uh, commits to see how the application has been modified step by step to reach this stage. Now, in a selector, as you will notice in the get, we implement a function here, which uh, is used to fetch the data from, from the server here. And then to make use of this within our application itself, what I have done is at the bottom, I defined several um, uh, functions here that make use of the selectors that we have defined earlier and then export that to our application. So we have use dishes, use comments. So these are all various custom hooks that I've implemented here, each of them uh, fetching a certain value and then making it available to our React application. So uh, for example, if you go into the application itself, you will notice, for example, in the menu component, you will notice that I am um, importing the use dishes uh, from the uh, state confusion uh, file here. And then in the application itself, I get access to the dishes by saying dishes is equal to use dishes. And then that's it. I get access to the dishes object array that contains the list of all the dishes. And then I can make use of this within our application. So each individual component directly gets access to the uh, state from the recoil uh, state management library. Also, recoil supports uh, suspense integration. So that makes it a lot more easy to reduce the amount of boilerplate code that we need in order to manage the loading state and the error state and so on. So you will notice that in the um, menu component, for example, you will notice that I, I am using the suspense boundary here to, to take care of uh, displaying the loading state while the application is fetching data from the server. And then also the error boundary here to deal with any uh, errors that are encountered in accessing data from the server. So uh, I have already introduced the suspense and error boundary in earlier videos uh, in this series. So uh, I'm sure you're familiar with these already. To summarize, Recoil is a very interesting state management library and a very promising state management library now, you should re uh, remember that it is still a work in progress and hopefully when the final version or a stable version is released for use with stable APIs, I will come back to introduce you to Recoil in more detail at that point.